happen? Your administrator always does that to you. We talked about everybody on this planet needs the same two things. Turn to someone and say, you need love, and you need to be accepted. Turn to somebody else and say, you need love, and you need to be accepted. I don't need anybody to love me. You're a liar. Everybody on this planet is looking for the exact same two things. They want to be loved, and they need to be accepted. And that is why there are so many different peer groups, and I'm not talking within teenagers, I'm talking within adults. That's why people would, don't even come to church any longer because they've been rejected in their own churches. I'm here to tell you today that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will love you unconditionally, and he accepts you, not when you clean yourself up, but exactly the way you are at exactly this moment of time. God will work in your life to clean you up. He loves you the way you are right now, no matter which way you come. Say amen. amen. We talked about how when a person does not feel loved and accepted, they end up feeling rejection. And this is a powerful emotion because it actually destroys people's lives. Now, it might not destroy them in the essence of how you see them walking about on an everyday basis, but it actually does destroy them in their hearts. Whether you recognize it or not, what you see on the outside isn't really you. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Your outside body is nothing more than a slave, either to your spirit man or your soul. Amen. Well, you know, this is the real me. Is it really? Because let's be honest, do you look the same you looked when you were 12, unless you are 12? <laughs> do you maybe got a few more wrinkles that you didn't have? Or how about people that have gone through horrific situations where maybe their body has been burned? Or they've had a situation with a sickness or a disease. I was watching a, a show yesterday and it was showing a, a veteran, a young man who was in his early 20s that literally had his face blown off during the war. His, his whole jaw was completely removed by shrapnel. And they reconstructed his jaw by hip bones and, and all this other stuff. And, and he, he had no teeth on the bottom of his mouth, but he had teeth up on top and he declared, I'm just glad to be alive. He does not look the same that he looked before he went to war, but he is the same person because the real you is not this. The real you is this. And when people feel the sting of rejection, and if they don't know how to handle it biblically and through the principles of God's word, then what happens is they actually become not themselves any longer because they end up building walls and petitions around their life. Even though you can see the arms and you can see the face. I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. So... Bruce is behind there. But what's happened is because he has felt the sting of rejection and the wounds in his heart, because he has a broken heart because somebody did not love him and rejected him, he has built a wall. And therefore, what has happened is his heart is untouchable. You and I are not living if our heart is untouchable. You and I are not living if our heart is untouchable. Amen. You and I are not living if your heart is untouchable. Amen. You're not getting it. You and I are not ourselves if we do not love and are touchable. Yeah, you're going to learn. This is a Pentecostal church, so <laughs> I'm one of those stubborn preachers. You and I are not living if we are not touchable. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it happened. Glory to Jesus. See, you made the sermon longer. It was your fault. Don't complain. So what happens is when rejection comes in our lives, if we don't deal with it properly, then we build a wall. 
We put a mask on our face and fake our life. Come on. Are you there? I'm all all by myself. You start to medicate yourself. There are people that are drinkers today because they were wounded as children. There are people that are into drugs, and there are people that are in prescription drugs. And we go through the list of different medications that people use, whether it be sex or whether it be acceptance in the, in the bar crew or wherever you are. You and I, if we do not deal with the wounds of rejection, many people go and start medicating themselves. You can buy everything in the world. You can have all the money in the world, and it's still not going to medicate your healing. Some people, when they get rejected, get mean. They do everything in the world to push away somebody. Even though that's what they really want, they want to be accepted. But they know that if they open their heart again, then they're going to get the sting of rejection. So when somebody starts getting close, they repel them rather than draw them. So rejection has so many different manners of of wounding other people. And then there are some who are just runners. They run from relationship to relationship to relationship, from church to church to church, from state to state to state, sometimes from country to country to country. But here's the reality. There's still one problem. You're there. So rejection is so powerful and real. And as Christians, God wants to teach us through his word how to deal with this properly. Because Jesus doesn't want you to walk around like this. Turn to someone and say, I don't want to walk around like that. You can wear the nicest designer clothing, but if your heart is closed off, this is what you look like. The reason that we use a lot of visuals in this church is because we don't only want you to hear it, we want you to see it. Because that is what you look like. You got that fake mask on when you go to work in the morning. Maybe even in your marriage you've been wearing a mask. Maybe since you were a child you've been wearing the the wall on your body and every time someone gets close you just let them close enough but not close enough to hurt you. I'm telling you, if you step out of the cycle of love, then you are going to live a life that is going to be very lonely. What is the cycle of love? Say it with me. Every time you love, you become vulnerable. Every time you become vulnerable, it is inevitable. I will be hurt. And every time I get hurt, I must forgive or I can't love again. Come on, let's say it again. Every time I love, I become vulnerable. And every time I become vulnerable, it is inevitable. I will be hurt. Every time I get hurt, I've got to forgive or I cannot love again. The moment you step out of the cycle of love, you've built your wall. And every time you've built your wall, you can have people somewhat close to you, but the fact is is that you are stealing from yourself and other people the opportunity to share the love that God has placed in your heart for others. You see, what I found a long time ago is that when you and I either sin or when you and I do not get healed, it does not just affect yourself. Nobody in this room is an island to themselves. Nobody in this room is, when you do something, the repercussions only affect your personal life. It is not true. Every one of us affect people in this room. You and I have circle of influences. You and I have circles of friends. You and I have, uh, have our, our parents and our brothers and our sisters and our families. And every time that something happens in our lives, it doesn't just affect you as a person. It literally affects everybody around you. So it's imperative as believers that we understand that God does not want you in fear, that God does not want you depressed, and that God does not want you building walls so that his love cannot flow through you and help somebody else feel that love and acceptance that they're looking for too. Amen? Amen. So how in the world can you keep this from happening? That is a good question, isn't it, Bruce? You have very ugly toes. I don't know if anybody's ever told you that. 